Warning, censorship. Warning, censorship. Warning, censorship. Warning. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And you have tuned into the Rebel News live stream on this, a Tuesday, June the 8th, 2021. I'm David Menzies and my co-host, well, let's put it this way, folks. I didn't win the big lotto on Friday. I'm not gonna win it tonight, but she is my consolation prize and that's why I keep smiling. She is the she-devil with a sword. She is the Khaleesi of Northern Alberta. She is Sheila Gunn-Reed. How you doing, my friend? David, I missed being on the live stream with you last week. I was in court all last week uh, covering different court cases for us at Rebel News. And uh, I didn't get my twice weekly David Menzies fix. And your hair looks great today. What are you doing that's different? I, I know you're being facetious. What I'm no. doing that's different is I got caught in a uh, rainstorm walking from the parking lot oh. into the headquarters. So it kind of looks like Brill Cream. And I know Oh, ever since the 60s, the wet head has been dead. But uh, that's, I can't believe you think this is a good look. Maybe there's some technical difficulties going on. But I got to tell you, Sheila, um, this is why the team so adores you. You worked so hard last week. Thank you. We're having some technical difficulties if we actually have people watching. Uh, Justin just alerted us to some technical difficulties. However, out of the corner of my eye, it looks like we're on YouTube. So oh, okay. if you're there, that's great. Justin, is the office burning down? I can't tell. Well, uh, if anyone's watching, once again, I have to play the <laughs> unfrozen journalist caveman card. Your bright tungsten lights and zoom lenses frighten and confuse me. But <laughs> Sheila Gunn-Reed, she's a smart bear. She can figure this out. <laughs> I think we're okay. back, according to Mr. Producer. By the way, I spoke of lotteries. I asked Mr. Producer for five bucks, the cost of a ticket for a Lotto Max. And uh, because he recommended to me to play the num uh, 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 sequence of numbers which happened to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And statistically, believe it or not, it doesn't matter if it's consecutive numbers or random numbers, it's still the same odds, but it didn't win. So Sheila, I think he owes me five bucks. What do you think? David, you're so cheap. You're just so, <laughs> so, so cheap. Um, but I guess that, that's kind of what I like about you because you keep the expenses low around here because you're also very frugal with the company's money as well. Um, I should tell I, everybody wait a what minute. we're doing around here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't say that was the company's money. Don't give people the wrong idea that if they donate, no, we're no. buying lottery tickets. That's my I, do re me. I want Mr. Producer out of his pocket right? to give me a refund. And what he gave me instead? A suggestion for another sequence of numbers, namely one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, which I played, by the way, because I'm so superstitious. <laughs> I'm just saying that you are a cheap individual and that bleeds <laughs> over into your work life, which I think we appreciate because you're frugal on that side of the equation. But if Justin is giving you suggestions to play the lottery and you don't win, why do you need money from Justin? Why did you play the lottery with his numbers in the first place? And furthermore, if you won, would you give Justin the money? Oh, we made a deal via text. I would pay him $1 million. And then I learned this morning when I asked for my $5 back for those horrid numbers he gave me, he actually said, I wanted you to lose. You see, he <laughs> wasn't bargaining in good faith. He deliberately gave me a oh, sequence Justin. of numbers that was even more improbable of coming up than, than ran. I mean, does anyone play the first seven numbers? Like I said, statistically, you have just as much of a chance, but have you ever heard of a six or a seven number lottery game, uh, Sheila, where the six or seven numbers were consecutive digits? That's what I'm saying. I don't think it's ever happened, but I stand to be corrected. David, I don't play the lottery. <laughs> I don't gamble. I don't do any of that. I work too hard for my money to just give it away uh, to the government in the form of lottery. Um, however, I do from time to time, like seasonally, I like the scratch and win tickets. Like I ah. like the 
the leprechaun ones, like the pot of gold ones or whatever. I don't know if you get those. And the reason I get them is because the leprechaun looks like my husband. He has like the little scruffy red beard sometimes and is kind of short with red hair and he looks just like my husband. So I just... When he's away working in March, I'll buy those because it makes me feel close to well, him. Well, Sheila, I've never met your husband. <laughs> I've always wanted to meet your husband. Now I know what to look for. A guy with scruffy yep. uh, hair and uh, probably wearing green and probably running around the northern Alberta countryside going, why are these kids always after me lucky charms? <laughs> you know, it's pretty accurate, actually. Uh, anyways, we should, we should get to okay. um, the business of the day because I did see... Some of the YouTube chats are not happy that we are a little more jokey than Ezra. They like Ezra's boring, straight to the point oh, style. Oh, jeez, I didn't and, say uh, boring, boss. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, Ezra. Um, but they, they, uh, some people prefer that. So, you know, here's the thing. There's somebody at this network for everybody. If you don't like me, might I suggest you uh, take a look at Drea's work. If you don't like Ezra, might I suggest you taking a look at David Menzies' work or Adam or K2 or Andrew uh, or Mocha or even Efron now. He's in front of the camera now. So, I mean, there's really somebody for everybody at the network. And if you don't like David and I on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you can watch Ezra on Monday, Wednesday and Friday because the live stream here, just used, it just used to be on Friday. Then the pandemic hit. There's more news than ever, despite what the mainstream media would have you believe. Um, so we decided let's talk to our favorite people, our viewers, um, every day for an hour during the week, work week. And so that's what we do. And currently we're on Rumble, Odyssey, and Super U. And we are also live streaming on the censorship platform <laughs> of YouTube. And if you're watching us on YouTube, might I suggest you take a little off-ramp to one of those uh, other platforms rumble odyssey and super you um we are on youtube mostly because they don't want us here um but also because it's a great place for people to find us and we can help you come over to the one of those other platforms um and if i recall correctly justin super you has the super you shout which is the ability to leave a comment or live chat is that right Perfect. And Odyssey actually allows you to leave us a little tip in the form of their own cryptocurrency. It's called a library. And um, if you want to support the work that we do here, completely of your own free will, unlike what Justin Trudeau makes you do with the mainstream media, you can do that on Odyssey. You can purchase some of their cryptocurrency and and send it to us to support the work that we do. And of course, Rumble, a great free speechy network. We're also over there, too. Fantastic. And, well, let's get serious to, uh, you know, placate the complainers already <laughs> on this, <laughs> Sheila. And, of course, a serious issue if you believe in freedom of assembly, freedom of speech, uh, is, of course, what's going on in Alberta with Pastor Coates. And, of course, Sheila has been there from day one at Ground Zero, the Grace Life Church. And, Sheila, you have a bit of an update for us, don't you? Sure. Yes. Um, so going back a little bit, um, I don't know how far I should go back because the problems with Grace Life Church, and I say the problems with Grace Life Church, the problems are with the government not leaving Grace Life Church alone. Um, they started, I guess, back in November and December, Grace Life Church decided that they are going to be obedient to God and not the state. And so they were holding unrestricted worship services. And that brought them under immediate surveillance from Alberta Health Services and the local RCMP. The pastor there, James Coates, was ticketed first. Then he was arrested and released in his office the following week. Uh, the following Sunday, he gave a sermon that was critical of the government. He was then forced to turn himself in on the following Tuesday, where he remained in jail for 35 days for breaching the public health orders. Coates went to trial uh, May 3rd through 5th. Uh, he's being represented by the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms. Great lawyers, James Kitchen, Leighton Gray, so great. Um, during the trial, they made some arguments that Pastor Coates's charter rights were breached. Now, the constitutionality of the law under which he was charged, that is being contested at a later date. 
right now they're dealing with the matter of the enforcement. Did the enforcement of that law violate his charter rights to free assembly, free expression, um, and religion and liberty? And the judge's judgment uh, was issued, I guess it would have been yesterday, um, in Stony Plain Provincial Court, Robert Shagus, Judge Robert Shagus ruled that none of Pastor Coates's charter rights were breached. So even though the province put Pastor Coates in the untenable position when they put him in jail, because he immediately qualified for jail or for bail when he went to jail. However, he could not agree to meet the bail conditions because the bail conditions said you cannot hold a worship service that does not comply with a public health order. But you also cannot attend a worship service that doesn't comply with a public health order. And for Pastor Coates, that meant that either he he had to trade his conscience for his liberty, and he couldn't do that. So he just sat in jail for 35 days until some sort of deal could be struck between the Crown and uh, his lawyers. Um, and interesting to note, yesterday, again, the Crown prosecutor involved in all of this, Karen Thorsrud, she oh. remains in. Mm, you're, you're, I can say know, it. There's no <laughs> publication pan. <laughs> I know. I'm only, I'm only being facetious, Sheila. But there's this no is the woman that doesn't to... want her name. It's, it's like Voldemort from the uh, Potter stories of uh, <laughs> she whose name must not be mentioned. <laughs> there's no publication ban, so I don't know why everybody's playing along with this baloney. But there's no publication ban on her name. She's not a victim. She's not prosecuting the mob. She's persecuting Christians. So it's not anything to do with threats to her safety it's uh threats to her uh shame and and her uh, reputation because she doesn't want her name associated with what's happening at grace life church and everybody in the courtroom's just like yeah we're gonna call her the public health prosecutor there's no such thing there's no such thing you're karen thorsrud crown prosecutor persecutor of christians that's who you are um, and so that happened yesterday. There were several times in the morning that they had to hang up from the video link and then start back up because uh, other people had access to the video link. And it's my suspicion, um, but I can't confirm it, but I, I'm pretty sure that the they kept hanging up from the video link and ultimately we ended all up on just audio for the Zoom or WebEx uh, court hearing. They didn't want anybody to know what Karen Thorsrud looked like. And wow. so that's why they they limited all observers and media to just uh, audio dial in um, for the hearing yesterday. And so uh, to put a period on the end of this, Trial isn't over yet. They've just dealt with the charter issues. So if they had found that the charter or Pastor Coates' charter rights were violated, the remedy would have been to toss the case out. That's what the lawyers were asking for. But since that's not the case, they're proceeding still with trial. And I think it's June 30th is when we're back in court on that. And I'll be, you know, covering it like the OJ trial Um because uh, I think it's important to make sure that we do the story right. Can't trust the mainstream media to tell the story of Grace Life Church. Um, and, you know, I do my best to be as accurate as I can, translate a lot of the legalese for <laughs> for people who are unfamiliar with court proceedings and uh, just, you know, get down to exactly the brass tacks of what's happening in court. But, you know, Sheila, I, I think <clears throat> whether or not you believe that Pastor Coates' charter rights have been violated or not, uh, the key word you said was shame, and there is so much shame to go around in terms of how this pastor, his family, his congregants, and, and yeah. the church itself, the physical property. When I see those aerial shots of the church and it's walled off like an internment camp, I can't believe that's 2021 Canada. Actually, I can't believe it's 2021 Alberta with somebody by the name of Premier Kenny in power, somebody that fought for religious freedoms when he was an MP. And there is so much shame to go along. And, and, uh, and, and Karen Thorsberg uh, shares that too, uh, by the very fact that she doesn't want her name uh, said, she doesn't want her image uh, transmitted. You know what that means to me, uh, Sheila, is that she is deeply ashamed of what she's doing. Sure she is. Um, 
just to correct you there for a second, I think you said Karen Thorsberg, and she's probably a very nice lady. Um, but uh, Karen yeah. Thorsrud is a problematic crown prosecutor. Um, and that's something like this story is so storied with so many twists and turns and different levels of persecution. You know, we had the the police and health officials entering the church while it's in progress to surveil, to take pictures. They tried to enter on Easter Sunday when uh, myself and Daniel Day were on the scene there. Um, you know, as I was explaining the case, I just completely skipped over the fact that the church was confiscated by the province two months ago yeah. to stop them from meeting. And now the Grace Life Congregation has gone underground like the churches do in China to avoid uh, persecution by the state or avoid being forced to be compliant with the state's rule on worship services. And let me tell you, I have absolutely had it with people who say, well, all the 2,000 other churches in the province, are they've taken things online, and so why didn't this church do that? There are hundreds of different Christian denominations because there are hundreds of different interpretations of the very same book, the Bible. And that is the point of religious freedom, is that there you can, you're free to interpret that Bible however you want. You're free to join whatever congregation you want, and you're free to worship however you have interpreted the Bible to mean your worship service. And if for the Grace Life Congregation, they say, we must meet all of us together every single week in person because that's sacramental to us. It's none of the government's business and it's none of mine. I'm Catholic. We, I have a different faith tradition than the people at Grace Life, but I fully support the their right to interpret the Bible as they see fit and meet together. Everybody who's there is there willingly. Leave them alone. A hundred percent. And, you know, Sheila, we also must speak to the ostensible policy reason of shutting down this church. It's all about the, the science. That's what we're continually yeah. told. This is a potential super spreader event. Uh, Costco, Walmart, shop till you drop. Nothing to see yeah. here, folks. Here's my question to you, Sheila, and I think I already know the answer. Has, is there any evidence whatsoever that anyone has come down with COVID-19 by attending this church? No, not since they went fully unrestrained. Early, early in the pandemic, when nobody knew what was going on, somebody from the church or associated from the church tested positive. I don't even think they were ever sick. Mm. The church closed for two weeks and then opened back up and said, you know what? we're just opening wide open. And from the time that they made the decision to open wide open, they have not had a single case. They have months and months and months of data to show that how they are doing it is perfectly safe. And apparently that's still not good enough for the government. And on Friday, after I saw those images of Jason Kenney at the Sky Palace of all places, on his private penthouse patio, enjoying drinks, I thought, you know what? I'm going down to Grace Life and I'm just going to go look at the condition around there. And I thought that just, I wanted to see, are they even at least taking care of the property they mm. stole from this congregation? The grass is overgrown. It looks, it's starting to look like an abandoned building. Wow. I mean, the grass is just coming up. Um, there's, you know, people have tied yellow ribbons on the fence, um, but you can see the dandelions are getting tall. This is, They've just got one mall cop there now. And then look at this luxury of how the other rule breakers get to live their lives. Wow. The only caption missing from that is let the meat cake, or at least in Ontario, yeah. cherry cheese cake. Uh, by the way, was that a Paladin security vehicle at Grace yeah. Life Church? You know, my rule of thumb these days, uh, Sheila, if Paladin is providing the security, uh, hold your nose, there is some stench in the background happening. Uh, they seem to be the go-to security company when there is a fiasco occurring, whether it's the quarantine hotels or locking down a church or shutting down the playgrounds in uh, Brampton uh, while their mayor, uh, Patrick Brown, Sneaky yep. Patrick, uh, plays hockey with his berry friends at an arena. Just unbelievable. They always seem to be <laughs> in the worst possible scenarios 
Broncos. Like, I guess, is that their slogan? You know, if uh, you have a you-know-what storm brewing, we're your security guys. <laughs> yeah. If the government's going to do it to you, we're going to help them. That's the story of Paladin security down there. <laughs> oh, man. And by the way, I see on, our, and this is a continuing story, and I know you're going to bring us uh, the future chapters, uh, Sheila. Now, you mentioned uh, Premier Kenny, and I have here on our to-do list video, Kenny Apology. This is not an apology for what's happening at Grace Life Church, surely. Oh, no, it's not an apology <laughs> for, uh, as my week played out last week, We've got quarantine hotels. Now, that's not a Jason Kenney thing, but it's a government overreach thing. And then, um, as part of last week, I also had to cover Jason Kenney getting a court injunction against rodeo legend Ty Northcott and his cute little wife, Gail, so that if they hold a rodeo or even breach a public health order, so if they're, you know, in Costco without a mask, Straight to jail, not a ticket, straight to jail because they're breaching a judge's order. Then I had to listen to Chris Scott, uh, the appeal of the court order the government got against him restraining his right to protest. Um, so, I mean, all while this is happening, I'm sitting in court and these pictures are being leaked of Jason Kenney and senior cabinet ministers, including the environment minister, the finance minister, and as luck would have it, Tyler Shandro, the health minister, sitting right next to the premier. In Jeez. Sky Palace, nobody's got masks on, nobody's social distancing, and people are drinking and eating. I don't know if they're eating. I mean, that might ruin their Jameson buzz, but they were up there drinking. And... Uh, that's not allowed. You can have 10 people, but you're not allowed food or drink. And if you're on a patio having a restaurant experience, you can only have four people and they're not supposed to be from different households. And I'm pretty darn sure that Travis Taves, the finance minister and Jason Kenney are not shacked up together. So what's going on there? If I did that and somebody called the cops, Jason Kenney's goons would come and give me a ticket. And then I'm a fight the fines client, just like Yankee <laughs> and yeah. Mocha. But uh, this is fine. And you know what? And this is in the, of all places, Sky Palace. How many premiers does Sky Palace have to bring down? Uh, we should be chaining up Sky Palace like it's a small town diner, like the whistle stop, and fencing it off like Grace Life. Because it's obviously a place where rules get broken. And that's what Jason Kenney does to places where rules get broken. And, and by the way, uh, Sheila, in case there are any uh, apologists for the premier and his friends for having their masks off and they're going by the argument, well, they're eating and drinking. What do you expect? Well, these are the same cats, I would believe, that would follow the Gavin Newsom, John Tory rules of dining. Remember that? Uh, take a bite or a sip. Mask up yeah. while you chew it or uh, drink it. Mask down for another bite or. I'm not making this up, folks. Uh, that's what these uh, poli these leaders uh, suggested, and I experienced that myself, yeah. uh, Sheila, on an Air Canada flight from Toronto to Montreal last month when we went to cover that uh, hockey hypocrisy game at the Bell Centre. I was drinking a bottle of water, and the flight attendant came up to me and said, "Sir, your mask," and I said but I'm drinking my water. And she said, we like it if you drink, put the mask up and then take your mask down for another sip. I swear, if I had known that was going to be the conversation, I would have you know, sprung my uh, camera out to film it. So if that is the rule of the establishment, you know, uh, eating and drinking between masks going up and down, why weren't they doing that? Why aren't they social distancing? Yeah. Why are they having a private patio? You know, my local pub owner is losing his shirt because Jason Kenney keeps making decisions to close them down overnight, overnight, overnight. You've got merchandise, you've got food, perishables. It's got to go in the garbage every time the government says, oh, oh we're going to, the hospitals are going to be overwhelmed, even though they never were. And you got to close your restaurant overnight, lay off all your staff again. But Jason Kenney, this whole time, quite likely, has had a private patio experience up there. Don't kid yourself. I'm going to get to the bottom of it because those hospitality expenses just don't um, end up a, as a line item at the end of the year. So um, uh, I'm going to do some serious digging into seeing what happened up there and when. Sheila, I got to ask you this question. I've asked it to you before, and it's simply this. 
What has happened to Jason Kenney? Has he had this 180 degree flip? I mean, he's even said allegedly that he wants a new base. Uh, so is it coming organically from him? Or is it the members of his team? I mean, Doug Ford, I think, has been a disgraceful premier during the pandemic here in Ontario, the most locked down region anywhere in the world, as far as I can decipher. And I, I know for Doug Ford, he's being led around the nose by the team. And the reason why I know that, folks, is that's in Doug Ford's own words. Doug Ford actually um, you know, uh, pitched a weekly show here on Rebel News, his idea and then changed his mind and when i caught up with him two months later after several unreturned phone calls and emails and texts he said dave if it was up to me i would do it but you see dave it's the team the team has other ideas okay so you're not a leader then you're really a figurehead that's what you're saying doug so to bring it back to jason kenny uh sheila is he being led around the nose too by some woke team people that say this is the way to go premier and he's going uh-huh yes sir yes boss that's what i'll do i'm not sure but i do know that the party is dividing into two very separate factions um we've got some people who are like more and more every day saying um and i think the, the apology if you want to call it that from jason kenny and we'll get to that in a second um, that didn't come because of pressure from outside. I think it came from pressure from within. Um, you know, there are M MLAs now who are saying, I'm going to lose my seat if I don't do something here. I'm a conservative, but I need to distinguish myself from the UCP machinery. And they're starting to speak out. And there's more and more of them every day. And it's not just we're against lockdowns. Now it's we're against the behavior of the locker downers. Yeah. And I, I think that's a, a different thing because now it's it's placing the blame on the leadership of the party and the head of the party is Jason Kenney right now. And you know, you you saw his inner circle there. And uh, those are the most strict locker downers uh, in the province outside of the chief medical officer of health. Tyler Shandro is the guy who stands up there and says what he's going to do to us every single week. Um, and, and, you know, the, the excuses they give, well, you know, I'm just like you. I don't follow all the rules all the time. Yeah. Well, except you're not just like me because I'll get a ticket. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you don't, you know? Yeah. A hundred percent. So why don't we get to that Kenny apology the apology of the premier in his own words. Now, I do want to address something that uh, has come that has been a, a real controversy in growing, in growing in recent days, and that was the fact that last uh, Tuesday night I hosted a working dinner for staff and a few colleagues um, in the premier's office uh, here in uh, Edmonton uh, on the deck outside my office. For the past 16 months, I have tried hard to observe the public health rules. I thought it's important for me to lead by example. But I have to admit, I haven't always done that perfectly. Uh, I can think of many cases uh, where I've been within two meters of people. And um, that, I'm sure, has been the case for the past 16 months for pretty much everybody in Alberta, the vast majority of whom have tried to follow these rules, but uh, sometimes may have found themselves within two meters of others. Um, Last Tuesday, I had a planning meeting scheduled with colleagues and staff. Uh, and because it was going to be a lengthy evening meeting, I asked that we bring in some takeout uh, to do it over dinner. Uh, and because we had just opened that day in phase one to outdoor gatherings of up to 10 people, I thought it was actually prudent and better to, to do that uh, meeting outdoors uh, on a deck. Uh, we took precautions to do it in a distanced way, trying to observe the rules. In fact, we set up four contiguous tables um, and uh, spaced chairs out. We've actually gone up and measured the chairs since this became a controversy. And apparently uh, four of us were two meters or more bet uh, between each other, but two people Two of those chairs were less than two meters distance, and there's no doubt that over the course of the evening, people came within uh, the two meter uh, distance that is laid out in the public health guidelines. And I regret that. I regret that the, the perception this has created 
quite frankly, um, when somebody said, are you sure you should be doing this? This is in public view. My response was, yes, we're allowed to follow the rules. And I thought, if anything, it's, it's a, a positive thing to show uh, are the openness at phase one of the Open for Summer plan with the social gatherings of up to 10 people. I certainly thought it was better that we meet uh, outdoors than indoors. We've pretty much suspended indoor, uh, most indoor meetings over the past three months since we got into the spring uh, spike. Uh, but we have begun in, in recent uh, days in the last couple of weeks since the legislature come back to have small uh, in-person gatherings uh, for longer uh, meetings and again I, I thought it was prudent and compliant with the rules to do this outside but it's clear that at some points in that evening we were not all uh, distanced from one another by two meters uh, and I truly regret that I take full responsibility for this I invited my colleagues there um, I uh, was uh, of the clear view that we were complying with the open for summer rules but uh, it is clear that uh, some of us were not distanced the whole night, and I have to take responsibility for that. Uh, we, have to, we have to set a higher example, a higher threshold of conduct, and so I want uh, sincerely to apologize uh, to my colleagues and to Albertans uh, for letting you down, uh, for not uh, being more careful uh, to scrupulously follow uh, every aspect of the public health guidelines that we expect of everyone. Um, and so I sincerely regret uh, that the decision that we made, we, um, uh, we should have taken extra precautions uh, to be distanced, um, and I just won't be doing any uh, social gatherings until we get into phase three, uh, just to avoid any possible uh, mistakes or misunderstandings. So uh, I sincerely apologize again. I take full responsibility, uh, and uh, I, I hope to learn from this, as I say, in ensuring that we, we not be put in a position of, um, of violating uh, the, the distance guidelines and the other uh, important public health measures which remain in place uh, until we get to phase three. Uh, Sheila, that meandering <laughs> apology, if it can be called that, that is wow. a huge public relations fail on two fronts. First of all, he's very sincerely sorry he did that, but then he meanders into territory where he thought he was following the rules. He thought their actions were prudent. Um, Big PR fail. If I was in Premier Kenny's war room, you know what I do, Sheila? I say to him, Premier, we're going to have um, a bylaw enforcement officer deliver you a ticket, and yep. you're going to accept that ticket, and you're going to say, folks, um, I broke the rules. I'm sorry. I should be leading uh, by a higher standard, and I'm not going to fight the ticket. I'm going to pay the fine. I screwed up. I have been fined. And I have learned my lesson. But no, that's the thing. When it comes to one law for thee and one law for me, he doesn't get a ticket. He's caught on camera breaking this. Yeah. Well, and by the way, whatever that ticket would be in dollar amount, that would be chump change for uh, Jason Kenney uh, to pay, unlike so many other Albertans who are out of work uh, because of this pandemic, in which case, you know, be protesting or running a church or running a cafe is is a considerable fine indeed that's what he should have done but i guess they're too entitled or too tone deaf to understand the hypocrisy that's coming across in being caught like they were yeah i mean and as he's talking i just my wheels in my brain are spinning about just how <laughs> stupid these rules are first of all Ignorance of the law is no excuse, Yep. especially when you're the guy literally writing the law. Yeah. If you don't know what it is, how the hell do I know? And secondarily, um, the idea that you can sit outside with a group of your friends and it's fine as long as you order in food from somewhere else and eat it. But if you went in those same numbers to a restaurant patio... That's illegal yeah. because you can only have four people. But if you have some stranger, a third party involved in the mix, bringing the food in, all of a sudden the coronavirus isn't going to jump out from behind the bushes and hold a knife to your grandma's neck or whatever they want us to believe the coronavirus is doing to our elderly these days. And this idea that we're disappointed in him. Do you think I'm disappointed? <laughs> uh, I'm so sorry for letting you down. I'm not let down. I'm furious yeah. because it is part of my job every single day to help the people that Jason Kenney has had the enforcement agency issue fines to. 
$1,200 fines, $2,000 fines, endless summonses, court orders, people in jail. Jason Kenney did all of that. And what? He's up there breaking the rules while Ty Northcott and his wife are being told if you don't wear a mask, you're going straight to jail? Yeah. This is... It's outrageous. I can't even believe it. And yeah, a decent thing to have done would be to say, you know what? Come give me a ticket. Yeah. I'll pay the ticket. I'll give I'll donate a matching amount of the ticket to the food bank or whatever Perfect. to help the people who have been harmed by the lockdowns and put out of work. And we're moving directly into stage three reopening because it's pretty clear. I don't think that the, the, the lockdown's necessary. He did none of that. Yep. Instead, he comes off like Justin Trudeau. I'll try to use this as a learning experience. No, yeah. I use it as a learning experience. I know that you're just as much a hypocrite as everybody else in government. That's oh, what I learned. A hundred percent. And I mean, like I said earlier, Sheila, they didn't even, you know, socially distance. They didn't even uh, do the Newsom mask up between uh, bites or drinks. Yeah. They didn't even do what those, remember the Mexican researchers uh, said when you're getting together and, and draining, <laughs> drinking, wear the, uh, wear the nose guard. You know, that's, this is what really, I don't know if Mr. Producer can dig that up, that video where we tried uh, the nose guard thing by using uh, uh, Groucho Marx's uh, fake nose. <laughs> and glasses but this is what really kills me sheila they treat us like imbeciles this is i'm talking yeah. about the people in general they treat us like idiots suggesting we go about wearing nose guards when we're eating and drinking this is coming from the political and bureaucratic and academia elites and yet do they ever do that it's simply for the reason that they don't want to look ridiculous, which is what that yeah. makes you look. So uh, again, a huge PR fail yet again. And yeah, there I am at, <laughs> uh, at an outdoor food court in Toronto, folks. Uh, this is what Mexican research has suggested. You get a nose guard and uh, we went to the novelty shop when you could go to the novelty shop and, <laughs> and, and, and buy something like that. Uh, would it be great to yeah, and see, you see the problem right off the bat, the things falling off my giant nose oh. already, but oh, another uh, PR fail from the people who are supposedly our examples. Well, we'll move from that to, I see uh, we have a, a story, an interesting story that was posted yesterday. It's an ongoing story, folks. Again, it's about hypocrisy. There's a lovely lady in Innisfil, Ontario, um, called Samantha Persaud. She runs a uh, uh, a studio. It's for dance, it's for meditation, it's for prayer. It's all about nourishing the body, the mind, the soul. And evidently, uh, she is Innisfail's version of Typhoid Mary if you talk to uh, law enforcement and public health and bylaw and what have you. So let's run a clip of that. And um, one of the most enjoyable moments is after we filmed the interview with her because those authorities, Sheila, they didn't dare come while she was being interviewed and had about 100 supporters uh, backing her, uh, her rally. But they came later and they came without a warrant, those dumb cops. And uh, well, you'll see Samantha Persaud go into full mother bear mode. David Menzies for Rebel News here in Innisfil, Ontario, and I'm with Samantha Persaud. She is the owner of High Vibrations. You've probably heard of Good Vibrations, the Beach Boy song. Well, Samantha's business is bringing about a lot of bad vibrations, bad vibrations from law enforcement and bylaw and uh, the public health unit. Evidently, this place, which is a place of dance, a place of meditation, a place of prayer, for some reason, the authorities think this is maybe a super spreader facility, and as such, Samantha is on the hook for potentially thousands of dollars in fines and has been served with a Section 22 order. So, Samantha, let's go back in time. We go back to, I guess, June of 2019. You, op you opened a similar facility in Alliston, Ontario, and it was a viable business. Things were going great. And then what happened? Yes, so I, had, I was a new entrepreneur taking a leap of faith. I opened up same high vibrations in Alliston, Ontario, um, and eight months later, 
COVID, the pandemic came and uh, they shut me down. By the grace of God, I was able to open and find amazing landlords here that own this private business space. And I renovated it and we got it ready for high vibrations. It's a smaller version, but we are still sharing love. We are still all of our services, dance, dance, fitness, uh, meditation, prayer. Everything is still the same. We're just in a smaller location, but we're helping the mind, body and soul. Um, and right now, this is really important. Holistic, natural healing is important to be open right now to help save people who are feeling suicidal, who are struggling with mental illness. I also do, I, I'm, I'm big on saving the children. I have a teen daughter and I have a nine-year-old and they're suffering right now along with thousands, millions and millions and millions of children. Mm -hmm. So I am, I am standing up for the children as well and having classes for them to be here for their mind, body and soul. And, and, you know, I can see where you're coming from. Uh, we really do, during this terrible period we're in, uh, need places that cater to the mind, body, and soul. That, that's all about wealth, wellness and getting healthy. And what I don't understand is that for some reason, I don't know, the authorities think this is a potential super spreader facility. That uh, is there any evidence to indicate that people are getting sick by coming here? No, absolutely not. Like I said, we are a small facility before anybody enters in we sanitize the entire floors um, like I said it's smaller so I do it all myself I sanitize with their like you know disinfectant I clear the floors um, we have seat covers for the toilets like I mean we have really added and amped up protection so we can make sure that everybody is safe um, you know it's it's adults and if it's not adults, it's adults bringing their children. And we are all capable of knowing if we're not feeling good, we stay home. They know the rules. You don't come in sick. It's just common sense. I do agree. Small businesses have an advantage in terms of sanitation, hygiene, because it is a smaller facility. There are fewer people in. Why are you, in the eyes of local law enforcement and bylaw, public enemy number one, yet we can drive uh, 20 minutes in any direction and come across a big box store like a Walmart or a Costco, and they're jammed to the rafters? I, I don't understand. I absolutely don't understand. That's my biggest fight right now because the parking lots alone already trigger me in a way of like sadness because I don't see as many people in my business in a month that Costco sees in a day, if not five hours. It is absolutely an attack on small businesses and it's just we are small and we know who's coming I know every one of my clients my members my unlimited my prayer circles everyone that's coming is pre-registered I know them right we're a community it's not just a walk-in you know service or like how Costco and Walmart is I know everyone coming through my doors I know when they're coming I know what my classes are who will be attending the classes like we have way more stricter protocols in our small businesses and you are actually um, you got a service for that people would find, I think, enriched enriching uh, during this period. I, I won't disclose information, but everyone that comes to me has felt like either killing themselves or struggling with anxiety. I've had to cancel dance, fitness classes and work out to be there for people to do. I'm an energetic healer and I, and I, I, I help to heal and, and balance the mind, body and soul and help them to stay calm. We hold hands and, and say prayers. So. I've had to cancel things to be here for people because I want to save them. I want to. I want them to know that they have a space like High Vibrations, my wellness center, to come to, to save, to feel like they have refuge. They have a place to go to to still connect. I never close my doors because I want people to, to live still. I don't want them to kill themselves. I don't want them to struggle with mental illness. Mental illness is a big deal for me to help fight, especially for our children. It's irreversible what's happening to our children. And I need them to be able to come here and to be free and to still dance and to still do movements, to still pray. I I need them to know that life is normal for them still you know everyone that comes here they're not forced to be here well that's they the thing to be here yeah that's what i don't understand i mean if you want to cower in your basement baking cherry cheesecake by yourself you have every right and all the freedom to do that but if people i mean we make risks every day when we cross the street we're taking a calculated risk if people want to come in and meditate or dance what's the problem Exactly. I'm not putting a gun to their head and forcing them to come here. Everybody that comes here chooses to come and they need my services. They need it for their mental health. They need it for their mental mind, body and soul. They need every one of my services. So I will never back down. I will stand strong for them because they need me. You lost a business in Alliston. They're making it almost impossible for you to operate here in Innisfail. Yet the people making these orders, the people handing out these tickets, they haven't lost a single day's worth of salary, have they? So 
please, can we stop this nonsense that exactly. we're all in this together? It's exactly that is we're all we are not all in this together when they're doing this. And I've pleaded with them. I've said, how are you going to pay you know, for my children, my bills, my mortgage to keep a roof over my kid's head to feed them? You know, they're yeah. they're they're not allowing me to come to work and make my own money, make yeah. my own money and to take care of my family and to so like, again, mind, body and soul for the community that I that I'm here serving. Um, so, yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. Like they're lying about that. We are all together. It's act actually bull. I honor everyone's decision for what they do. Whatever I'm doing in here, people need to just honor that. I again, whoever's coming in here is choosing to come in here, choosing to have their exemption, whatever they have. There, it's it's. We all have our sovereign. So we're sovereign souls, so we choose what we want to do. So it's like they're trying to take everything away from us, and it can't be done. Like we have to stand up against this. We have to. Well, you know, I'm so happy you're doing this. Uh, you know, there's obviously a need for this. I see uh, your supporters are growing in number even as we speak. Yeah. And like I said, it's a matter of choice. If you think uh, this is a terrible place to go, then don't go to it. But right. if you think this is going to enrich your, your body, your mind, your soul, then, you know, come on in. The other thing too, Samantha, we, we don't think it's right what's happened to you, so we would like to extend the offer to make you our latest okay. Fight the Fines Perfect. candidate, which is to say, we are going to source for you a top-notch criminal lawyer, and we will crowdfund your legal fees so you don't have to pay a single nickel. What do you think about it? So, Sheila, before we get into uh, the discussion on Samantha Persaud's case, uh, that was about a week before the law enforcement and uh, somebody either I think from public health or bylaw, I'm not quite certain, they came, they didn't have the courage to show up with all those supporters there. Not that yeah. anybody was going to get physical with with these people, but they didn't want to endure, I guess, impolite uh, remarks. So um, that was, I believe, um, I think it might have been May 24th and then around May 31st, this is what Samantha encountered. No right to enter in here. Get out. You have you have several people. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I said to remove yourself from the property. You had no right to open my doors. Get off of my property. And you're not going to buy Get off of my property now. Get off of my property now. Get off of my property now. You are to close. Get off. You are to You get off. Get off. Let go of my door. Move. Move. Listen to what Move. I'm Listen I to command what I'm you to move off my property now. Get off. Move. Get off. Move. 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 Let go of my property. Move. What's your badge number? What's badge your name? 227 Constable. What is your name? Constable Bullyu. Hey, I'm done. Very I don't care. She's tired. I'm sick and tired. How dare you come to my place of business that I have to feed my children. I'm so f***ing done. Get off. No. I know. Get off. I'm tired. Get off. Now, you do. Get off Mom. my property. Get off my property Bye. and don't come back with you. Dare open my doors. You are being served. Thank you. Good night. Both of you. I'm sick and tired of you Nazis. I'm sick and tired what of you What does this demons. car say? Protect with Get courage, off. serve with compassion. What are you doing right now, ma'am? You have her badge number, her name? She's getting served. Opening up my doors. The hell you think you are? Well, folks, you can see this. Wow, that was powerful, Sheila. It was like Samantha Persaud was uh, channeling Arthur Pawlowski, wasn't it? Yeah, I actually wrote down those exact words. <laughs> uh, channeling Pastor Art on my little piece of paper that sits in front of me. Um, you know, it's it's so funny to hear everybody talking about these how we must support female entrepreneurs oh, all yeah. the time, right? Like all the politicians say, female entrepreneurs, we got to lift them up. They need special treatment, whatever. I don't think we need special treatment. I think they need to be left alone. Uh, if you look at who the government keeps closing all the time, if it's not restaurants, it's female-led industries in personal care, hair salons, yoga studios, um, you know, these female personal trainers who are, you know, trying to make a living supporting their kids working from home, the government is absolutely hammering them. And I, I just think it's interesting for the self-proclaimed feminists in all levels of government to not even have any sort of self-awareness about what they're doing to these female-led industries. And, you know, I think there is a uh, teachable lesson in that video uh, with Samantha and, and, and as well with Ardor, which is, 
if police come to your place of business, if police come to your residence and they don't have a warrant, don't yep. let them BS you. Our, our, uh, our, our gracious employer, Ezra Levent's always saying, the police are not above lying. They, they, they lie all the time. And yeah. if they say that, um, yeah, we can come in. Uh, no, let's see the paperwork. They are required to that. And you know what, it really makes me sick, Sheila, because the police know, they know this. They know they have to have a warrant. And whether mm -hmm. it's Samantha Prasad's high vibrations or back in April at the houseboat in Montreal with the Rebel News team, uh, where the Montreal police tried to come in and search for God knows what. Uh, maybe it was to plant something on us. Who knows? Because the way that police service operates, there's nothing uh, beyond the realm of comprehension. Um, that's the thing. Don't bend the knee. Make them go through the hassle of getting a warrant. And as we saw in Montreal, Sheila, the Montreal police couldn't find a judge uh, to give them that warrant. They went, what? You're trying to get into a houseboat that's under capacity to do what? You're upset with the press coverage of Rebel News or as some Montreal police officers call us, uh, Jew media, whatever that means. Yeah. So I think, um, as you saw with Samantha, uh, even though these people come with tasers and guns and a badge and a uniform, don't get intimidated. They, above yep. all uh, others, have to follow the rules. Yeah, make them earn the $1,200 or $2,000 fine they're gonna try to get from you. Yeah. Make them go find a friendly judge. They have friendly judges, I'll tell you that much from my recent court coverage here in Alberta. Mm. Justice Rook in Calgary will do whatever Alberta Health Services wants him to do. Um, I've tuned into a lot of court cases, and that is the most miserable judge that I have <laughs> ever had the displeasure of listening to. But, I mean, they, if they want to get a warrant, they know how to get a warrant. So make them get a warrant. Yeah. Because they might just get a judge who says, uh, no, that's a little bit crazy. Or they might get a good judge, but at least you made them work for uh, what they're about to do to you. And uh, one last thing on the high vibration story, Sheila, is that if you want to help Samantha, because public health is yeah. after her, bylaw, the police, the local media, and by the way, the lunatic fringe in Innisfil, which I call yeah. the COVID Karens, who rat her out every time they see cars in our parking lot. You know, this is the most despicable thing, I think, of this pandemic so far, Sheila, yeah. is that those rat finks, those snitches, the former hall monitors back in uh, elementary school they this is their time to thrive they think they're doing god's work uh, or the work of science by ratting mm. out somebody simply trying to make a living i am so sick of these people yeah that they've been emboldened by the pandemic yes. because they really think that they're, I mean, some of them are just awful people who want unearned power over their fellow man. And some of them are so, and I, I'm trying to be sympathetic to them, or empathetic, I guess is the right word, because they're so whipped up into this irrational fear by the idiot box they sit in front of every single night, and they listen to the CBC, and they listen yep. to the politicians, tell them about how deadly this nearly completely survivable disease is, that it justifies how they're treating all the people around them, all the strangers that you would just, you know, if you didn't like them, you would just leave them alone. Now you think that you get to control their life because you're doing, like you said, the Lord's work or science's work, because as we can see, nobody cares about the Lord anymore. <laughs> um, you know, they, they think that they are saving lives. They, they're like the firefighter rushing into the burning building. That's what these losers think they are. A hundred percent, Sheila. You know, the mainstream media coverage of this pandemic you know what i call it i call it covid porn they are yeah. so hysterical whether it's rising case numbers not death numbers folks case numbers where people uh, as i've always said sheila it's a heck of a virus isn't it where you have to get tested to find out you're sick with it yeah and um and and always these future waves and future variants coming so even though they're even though the case numbers are down on a daily basis folks can't let our guard down they're still after us it's despicable and i've had enough of it 
By the way, when it comes to the Department of Despicable Double Standards, why don't we zip over to Avi Yamini, our wonder down under, mm -hmm. and his latest encounter with the police. Wow, this video says it all. How you going? There's nothing happening. Where are you from? SPF. SPF. Did you guys get a visit last night from Vic, Vic Paul not no, to come here? No, no, I don't think Vic Paul knows who I am. They know who I am, but they still came and warned me not to cover it. Oh, yeah, I saw you. You tweet. On Friday night at about 8.30pm, police visited my home to hand deliver a letter from the Assistant Commissioner warning me not to attend any lockdown protests the following day. On your list tonight is Channel 7, 9 or 10. I uh, haven't gone through the entire list, mate. Do you mind looking at the list and letting us know? For I think Sorry, the, public, that, the, public, sensitive information. the public would like Excuse to know. Me, mate, the public would from. like to know if you're going to just Channel careful, 9 and mate. 10. Be careful. Yeah. Shame on you. Trying to intimidate journalists. Obviously, I didn't comply, and you can see my reports from that day so far at rebelnews.com.au. And make sure to sign up to yaminireport.com so I can send you the remaining reports over the next few days directly. But while I was out doing my job, I thought I'd take the opportunity to ask mainstream media journalists there if they'd received the same visit. Watch and share what happened. Hey, Don. I'm part of the communications team, just letting you know this is private property and okay. the filming zone is on... Where's all the media here at the moment? The Pebble. Um, yeah, oh, we'll go to that side. Yeah. Oh, thank you. What's going on, guys? You're not allowed to film here, they told us. You're allowed? Can I ask you, did, did Vic Paul visit you last night and warn you not to come here? I'm not saying anything, no. But, did you get... I just, just a simple question. Did they, did they come to your house and warn you not to come? No? Why do, you think, why do you think that is? Why do you think they come to me and not to you? Nah. Channel 9, I don't know her, she might be good. I'm not saying there's anything bad, but that's the point. I just want to double check if they went to the mainstream media, but there's a reason. Uh, they obviously tow the government's line. They don't tell the other side of the story. She didn't get a visit last night from Victoria Police. I did. It's interesting, though, that they came to my house and not yours. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. Why? Why is my st is my is my reporting so much more offensive than hers? <laughs> no, no, it's the same. It's the same. No, don't. That's offensive. <laughs> I do not work for SBS. I want. I distance myself from him. <laughs> but there was and you know, Sheila. All I have to say to Avi is, I feel your pain, mate. Because of course, last weekend. I was served, well, I wasn't home, but uh, Lady Menzoid was there. I was served by the Polito, Peterborough, uh, a Peterborough peace officer with a summons uh, for attending the rally in Peterborough back on April 24th. Uh, keep in mind, I was not an organizer. I was not a speaker. Uh, I was not even an attendee. I was a member of the media covering it. And I have a summons. The court uh, date is uh, June 21st. Funny, I know Global News was there. I don't think they got a summons. I know the Peterborough Examiner was there. They didn't get a summons. But I, along with Maxine Bernier and Randy Hillier, uh, got a summons, even though there were more than 1,200 people out there. So it's very odd, isn't it, Sheila, whether it's Avi in Australia, uh, us over here across the pond, how the police pick and choose who they're going to sock with a summons or a fine. Uh, there is no consistency whatsoever, which leads me to believe all of this is political. I would disagree with you on that point there. I think there is definitely consistency. No. It is people who are telling the other side of the story, defying the narrative, um, exposing the police for their bad behavior in many instances, those are the people getting the tickets. That's the recipe for getting a ticket. Yes. Is if you go against the accepted narrative in all of this, you put yourself at risk of a ticket. You know, you're you're so right. I, and you know what's perversely amusing? It's the global news um, website. The coverage of uh, the Peterborough protests. This is the headline, Sheila. Peterborough police quote can't charge them all, end quote, but ready for anti-lockdown protests with Bernier and Hillier. Yeah, we can't, we can't charge all 1,200 or 1,400 people, whatever the number was, but we can 
charge some, and those sums, those people would be big mouth politicians that are very uh, vocal and visible, and um, media outlets. Oh, not you, Global. You don't have to worry about getting a summons. You're fine. Or you, Peterborough Examiner. But that outlet out there in Toronto that came in all the way to cover this, what's it called? Yeah, Rebel News. Oh, we're going to teach them a lesson. And we're going to drive all the way to the reporter's house and back, which is several hundred kilometers, to serve him personally for... Again, what did I do? The practice of yeah. journalism, Sheila? And that's the same with Avi. What did he do? Yeah. It, yeah. It's astonishing. Just be more like the CBC, David. Just be more <laughs> like the CBC. And you'll be fine. They're never getting hassled. No. Um, okay, we should, we've got a few chats to get through, and then we're already uh, at the top of the hour. So we have a hyper chat from Celtic Mutt. Have you all there at Rumble considered also broadcasting on your tube? It's another free speech platform. Oh, I didn't even know that that existed. We've got a hyper chat of one library from Binga. So what's next? The unaccountable, not elected health officials just going to use the police to throw the Christians to the lions? Yeah, I guess just cut out the middleman. Um, <laughs> it, it's, it's funny because my father-in-law refers to these, like what David calls the COVID Karens, as the branch COVIDians because he's like, they're just... <laughs> Love it. A cult. <laughs> He's like, there's an absence of God there, so they're just filling it in with science. Yeah. Um, but they are a doomsday cult, really. Like, the doomsday is the fourth wave, the fifth wave, the sixth wave. And they don't have prayers. Like, they don't have conventional prayers, although they have this, like, near-religious recitation of daily case count numbers. That's their daily prayer. It's like, you know, when I go to church and uh, the priest says, um, you know, like, Lord be with you, and we all say, and with your spirit, for like the branch Covidians, they say, um, stay home and stay safe. And then the, the congregation says, and we're all in this together. Like, it's the same. It's it's all the same. It's very weird. Um, once you start looking through it, uh, everything that's happening around you with that weird lens. Yeah, I feel I feel so sorry, Sheila. Forever, whoever coined the phrase "the check is in the mail," which became, which of course became the greatest lie ever told. Uh, sorry, pal, you're in second place now. It's now we're all in this together. Yeah. <laughs> stay home, stay safe. Uh, we've got an, another library from Celtic Mutt says, "Correction, have you all considered using your tube? It's another free speech platform." Um, we've got a rumble chat say, from joyful art from the heart. Uh, I think she learned from pastor art. I think, um, from your high vibrations lady. Yes, I think she did. Uh, boomer Lily, can he go to jail for 35 plus days? Yeah. Yeah. You know, he admitted to repeatedly actually violating the public health orders. He didn't just say he did it once. He said, there have been times during this pandemic that I got closer than six feet to people and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, me too. Um, but I'm not a locker downer. I yeah. just break the rules because I don't, I don't, I just don't follow them. I just, I do what I want. Yeah. My whole life is that meme of Kid Rock walking down the beach, swinging his arms like what? And th that's me. I just <laughs> do what I want. I'm going to do what I want. Wait a minute. Is uh, that Kid Rock or the Bushwhackers you're talking about? Here? <laughs> no, okay. I'll send it to you later, David. There's a, maybe, maybe Justin can dig it up, but like where he's just like storming the beach very confidently. <laughs> that's me. Uh, uh, Super U Shout, I think it's called. Fraser McBurney, Fraser Bo says, I can't wait to the next election to fire you, Jason Kenny. Fraser, you're in Ontario. I'll fire Jason Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Here's the tragedy of that remark, Sheila. What's lurking behind door number two for you? Oh, that's the thing. That's the thing. I just want Jason Kenny to be the best possible conservative he can be, that he promised everybody he was going to be. Um, instead, we got uh, Rachel Notley in a, in a Jason <sighs> Kenny suit. It's just, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Rumble chat from Share two one one, I think, or tw two one. I feel bad for that woman. Um, have been her Arthur, Abby, all who stand up are an example for the next person. Isn't that the truth? And I think we're all caught up now, Justin. 
We are indeed. Okay, well, again, Sheila, another fast hour and a bit. And I want to thank uh, Justin behind the board as the super producer, all the people that contributed comments and uh, uh, some do re me in those cryptocurrencies. I totally do not understand libraries. I thought that's a place you go to read a book or I don't something. Know. <laughs> and of course, my lovely co-host, Sheila Gunn-Reed. So we will be back in this space at one o'clock Eastern, or rather 12 noon Eastern on uh, Thursday. In the meantime, folks, stay sane.